Alrighty, so we're finally ready to start painting. Now you might wonder, how do I begin? Like this picture is in color. This is definitely not the colors that I was using. So one thing that I find helpful is if you're working purely with value, I'm gonna say hue in this case is irrelevant. Doesn't matter what you're using. We're talking about value. So uh, we can print our picture off in black and white. And another helpful tip would be to take a photo of your value scale and then turn it black and white as well, because then you're going to see those pure values and no longer focus on what the color is. So that might help you kind of manipulate and figure out what colors you need to do. All right, so as I am getting started, I am going to, I don't know, mostly just think about those larger areas of value to start with. So this first pass is going to be a little rough. I can go in and clean things up later as I begin building up detail and value. I think my biggest struggle is I'm primarily a watercolor artist and so my brain is very much set on how watercolors work. And then, you know, my second choice would be oil painting, which is, again, a little bit different than acrylic, so I'm I don't think I have painted realistically with acrylic in probably 15 years. <laughs> so this is a fun like learning curve for me to get back into it. There's some little hiccups. So at this point I'm kind of going back and forth between my tints and I, don't know, I guess closer to a pure hue. I'm not doing too many details at this point. I just want this gradient going back and forth. Whenever I feel like my brush might be too saturated with a color, like there might be too much paint on the brush, I can just wipe it off with my paper towel and then go back to it. So right now I'm kind of feeling like there's a little too much on the belly of my brush, so I want to get rid of that and dry some of that off. And then I'm going to go back with my middle value to hit some in-between spots here. And when I am blending, I don't know, it's kind of a mix of back and forth going between the two colors. Another thing I like to do is add water. So whenever my paint starts to get kind of tacky, I can go in and add a little bit of water to soften it up again, and mush the areas together. Whenever I notice that my bristles are starting to leave sort of brush strokes on my painting. I know it's time to go in and get a little bit of water and a little bit more paint. Um, that is going to allow me to have smoother, more full areas of paint. Really the only time we want to see those bristles is if we're dry brushing and we want to create texture. Um, but otherwise, if you're not doing it intentionally, it tends to look kind of sloppy. The main thing with acrylic is if you use too much water, uh, you're going to end up seeing a lot of brush strokes and, and kind of seeing like some transparency in the form, which is not necessarily a good thing. So usually we want to see kind of some nice flat, opaque layers and that's going to kind of end up working out a lot better for us. So I'm going to go back in with my medium values to kind of start this gradient of going from medium to dark. Um, I notice that's kind of a little streaky and I want to fix that as I go so I'm just kind of mixing up a 
a gradient to start with. One thing that's kind of important if you don't really pay attention to this, but when you load up your brush, you want to kind of rotate it as you go so that you get the same color on you know, both sides of your brush. This is going to help you, you know, so when you run out of paint on one side, you can rotate your brush and flip it over. And now that I am, you know, putting in the second layer, I'm kind of at the blending stage. This is where I want to think about what kind of blending do I want to have? Do I want it to be really smooth? Do I want it to be more painterly where I can see the brush strokes? Um, those are all things that I'm going to want to consider as I keep building up these layers. As I make my way up here, I'm starting to get into just like the straight hue. So if I need darker shadows at this point, I'm going to need to start creating shades with black. So I'm working on kind of getting these sort of mid-range areas first and kind of everything that's behind things like the laces and the sort of stripe here and the, the rubber soles. Because um, that way I think it's going to make it a little easier for me to have some clean edges as I'm working. At this stage I decided that I really want to look at my background values. So I'm using a flat brush which helps me get those crisp edges as I'm painting. And another thing that I'm really thinking about as I'm laying down this paint is to try to avoid what we call haloing, um, where you can like really see the outline of your brush around your object. So I'm trying to kind of blend it in as much as I can. Um, doing that really helps kind of define my edges and make sure that everything is you know, crisp and clean the way I want it. And now I'm just kind of going back in and working with building up my darker shadows underneath the laces as I go along. Um, that will help me because it's a little bit easier to paint what's underneath something and then paint what's on top of it. And like I've mentioned before, it's a lot easier to blend your colors when they are both wet. So um, you'll find me kind of going back and forth over the colors with one value and then another value. Lots of back and forth and kind of smooshing them together in the middle. And that's really what's going to help us create these nice little gradients of value as we go along. Well, as y'all can see, I have spent some time on this outside of the video. It's taking way longer than I was expecting, so I had to spend a few hours outside of this working. Uh, what I decided to do was to really just focus on this one roller skate for this video because I am never going to finish. <laughs> Unless we want like a five hour long video because that's kind of where it's headed. So, um, to finish things off, I want to work on the wheels. And the wheels are a little interesting because they're kind of translucent, so I can see through them a little bit. Um, when I'm working with tiny details, I think it's really important to make sure that I don't have like any glops of paint on the belly of my brush, because if I do that, it's going to really kind of inhibit my ability to paint fine details. And honestly the brush that I'm using right now I'm not even sure if I'm going to be able to get the small details that I'm looking for as cleanly as I want. So we will see how that goes. Yeah and as I'm doing that E definitely not small enough. I'm going to have to find the right brush. Okay, I got some baby brushes now. We'll see how that goes. Well, it appears third tries a charm with my brushes. I finally found a small one that is working for me. 
and now it appears that my lighting has decided it's now a rave. So we'll see how the rest of this video turns out. It's gonna get wild up in here. <laughs> oh boy. Oh, well, it is a good thing that I have other options for lighting. Otherwise, we would be painting in the dark. So let's get back to business. Uh, when I'm painting these tiny marks, um, or should I say the letters on my wheels, um, one thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to clean up the edges with the darker values that surround the letters. So I'm not super worried right now about these tiny details. I can always go back in and clean them up. I, of course, am trying to make them, you know, relatively clean because it will make my life easier later. But if I make a little mistake, that's not that big of a deal. This is not my day for painting, y'all. My lights are messing up. My cat containment method has failed. <laughs> Whatever shall we do? We'll just have to let Doodle hang out with us and he might jump on my painting now. Are you happy now? You are? Okay. Right now I am kind of working on the mid-tone sort of reflections on the wheel. Um, so I'm just kind of building up my values there. And every time I am working on these wheels, all I can do is just sing Nerds ESP in my head all the time because there's like a whole section of the song where they're just going energy, 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 and anytime i see these wheels it's just repeating that over and over again so right now i'm kind of just glazing some transparent color over the top of the lighter washes that I did, kind of in the hopes of creating that sort of translucency that we see in the wheels. I'd say it is moderately successful. <laughs> it's not quite there yet, but it is getting there. So the key to getting these edges really good is to understand the curve of that wheel. I gotta get just the right curve otherwise it's gonna look really wonky. Oh so stressful. So this is where it's like super important not to have any like glops of paint on the belly of the brush. We just want paint on the end of the brush. So it's going to help us get those crisp edges. And once I kind of have this dark value blocked in, I'm going to go in with my highlights over the top of it. Another thing to note is like getting those clean edges, you need to have like a really confident brush stroke. If you do like short little wispy lines, it's going to be a lot harder to get that hard edge um, so like the longer and stronger your brush strokes are the more likely you're going to have a good clean edge and that just takes some practice and if you're like me and you drink way too much coffee and your hands are shaky <laughs> uh, or you know you just have shaky hands in general um a suggestion would be to brace your hands as much as possible. So keep your arms close to your body. The closer your arms are to your body, the more stability you're going to have because um, you're kind of bracing against yourself. 
another thing that is helpful is holding your breath. So clearly I am not holding my breath right now, which is making my hand a little shaky as I'm doing these details. Um, but I don't know, I think about like when, if you ever watch the Winter Olympics, the biathlons, you know, where they like cross country ski and then they stop and shoot stuff. <laughs> Very Scandinavian. Um, but, you know, in order to lower your heart rate enough to get those steady hands, it's helpful to hold your breath. And that is kind of a trick that they do to kind of slow down their heart so that they're not bouncing all over. Um, I found that to be helpful. And in my short time as a tattoo artist, another technique that I learned for steady hands is um, always pulling my line towards me. So I'm trying not to push my brush away, but instead I'm dragging it towards me. And that allows for a lot more control of the brush or pencil or whatever tool you're using. Um, but yeah, coming towards yourself much easier than pushing away from yourself when you're trying to get a clean line. Getting the ellipse of this wheel just right is definitely a challenge. Trying to make sure that that curve is exactly where it needs to be, otherwise it's going to look really wonky. So this is an interesting problem to work with. I might have to go back and forth over this area a little bit to start to get things in the right shape. Depending on how your hand's feeling, it can really, in a space like that can really uh, be anxiety inducing if you're struggling with it. Once you start adding in the highlights on things, that's when we start to see a little more val or a little more volume appearing. The key to getting those highlights kind of accurate would be, I don't know, I like to kind of make them not so solid, you know, like not having like a, just a block of white, because that doesn't really look volumetric or real. So I like to try and keep them kind of organic and, and a little, almost like I'm dry brushing just a little bit. But just like, you know, drawing a portrait, once you get those highlights in the eyes, it really creates some life. It's the same with still lifes. Getting that pop of contrast is really what makes everything sort of come alive and feel really round and, and real. Well, that's feeling pretty good to me. I think before I, you know, go into super time lapse again, um, I think we'll just talk about blending just a little bit more, uh, especially just on this toe stop, because I feel like it's a really great example of a nice gradient. So I'm going to start with my hue. So my pure color, and I'm just going to kind of lay some of that down on here. And I do have some of that drying medium mixed in here. That's why it seems kind of translucent. Um, basically, in order to get your paint to blend well, you need to have enough paint and wet enough paint for it to do what it needs to do. So this blending medium kind of helps, or drying medium. But also if you just have like a decent amount of paint on the surface, that also does the trick. So I'm just going to kind of lay some down here to work with. And what I'm going to do is I want to create like a nice gradient with the dark values. So I need to mix up kind of a shade throughout. 
And then what really helps us blend is like where these two come together, where they meet. And I'm just going to lay some of this down over the top of the glaze that I have here. And now I'm going to go back to the pure color. And I'm just going to go over that little edge in between the two. And just kind of go back and forth over it. And that is going to smoosh my colors together. And now there's kind of a highlight here. So I'm going to leave a little open space there um, to accommodate for that highlight. And I think I'm going to add in like a tint with this area. So I'm going to mix up kind of a darker tint. I'm just going to lightly drop that in. Some of these highlights kind of have more of a hard edge, so it actually is like working well to not blend it as much. So as I'm going, I'm noticing my brush is starting to get kind of sticky. And that tells me that I need more water to kind of loosen up my paint just a little bit. Um, and that's going to help with the blending. It's also going to help lay down the paint um, more cleanly. And basically, to get a good blend, it's really just a game of back and forth. So we lay down one value and then we come back and smoosh it together with the value next to it that we want to blend it with. And the more we do it, eventually we're going to get to a point where it feels good. Like everything seems like it is laid out the way we want it. Using a flat brush is awesome when you need to make lines with your paint because um, you can use the flat edge of it and that really does the trick when you need to create more crisp edges or straight lines. You kind of have that started already. You need to push this brighter highlight a little more Notice I have some kind of scuffs that become highlights down here on the bottom of the toe stop, so I can kind of play around with those. Now I'm starting to feel really good about this as I'm playing with the highlights. Just kind of softening the edges a little bit, and that is what's kind of helping create that nice gradient. And I think to soften this highlight that I added, I'm just going to go over it with a glaze of my pure color to kind of knock it down just a little bit. And that's going to help kind of make it appear a little more natural. Just break up the line just a tish. That's going to make it not so solid anymore. All right. I feel like that's feeling pretty good. And then I can kind of go around the edges and clean up the shape just a little bit with the background value as well. There's a lot of fine detail taking place in this back wheel, primarily because it is transparent and there's kind of like bumps and ridges inside of it, which is making it, you know, quite a challenge to kind of accurately capture what is happening inside of the wheel. Um, so I'm just kind of going back and forth quite a bit and playing with those values to try and like pull forward some of the details that I'm seeing kind of captured inside of 
this transparent wheel. And I have a feeling I'm probably going to like glaze over some of this just a bit and that's going to maybe help me create some of that depth like it is really sitting back in space or sitting more transparently inside of it. As I was doing my outlines I realized that I kind of covered up some of my letters so I'm going to go back in and try and clean those up. My best guess is that it's going to be a little bit of a back and forth to get them how I want them. Just want to remember, you know, get your brush wet every once in a while to loosen up the paint. It's going to lay a little easier when you do that. almost where I want it to be. So I'm just going to mix up a slight shade to clean up the edges once more. Make sure my brush is getting wet. And just work on our refining. I always get made fun of when I'm doing fine detail work because I stick my tongue out when I'm doing this. Uh, I don't know, it just helps me concentrate. I'm like the Michael Jordan of artists. If I gotta dunk, I gotta stick my tongue out. If I gotta do details, I gotta stick my tongue out. <laughs> I am so close, y'all. So close. The end is nigh. Whew, everybody. That was a grueling 10 hours of painting, but I'm pretty happy considering I haven't painted with acrylic in like 15 years. Check it out. Well, hopefully this is helpful for you all and keep practicing keep doing your thing. Thanks for watching and keep creating.